Whether you're using gas, oil, or electricity to heat your water, there are several buying options for water heaters. Some will cost less to run, but may cost more upfront, while others will be cheaper to buy, but will cost more to run. So I'll go over your options in this video, and hopefully it'll help you with your buying choices. Your five water heater styles include storage tanks, tankless water heaters, heat pumps, solar water heater, and a condensing water heater. Storage tanks are the most common type of water heater. As the name suggests, these consist of an insulated tank in which water is heated and stored until needed, then emerges from a pipe on top of the water heater to travel through the home. There's also a temperature and pressure relief valve, which opens if the temperature or pressure exceeds a preset level. Natural gas water heaters typically use less energy and cost less to run by about half than electric water heaters. Although you should note that gas models cost more at the time of purchase. Rather than storing water, tankless water heaters use heating coils to heat the water as you use it. They're more energy efficient than a storage tank, but provide only a limited flow of hot water per minute, usually about three and a half gallons. As soon as a hot water tap is turned on anywhere in the home, internal sensors detect the flow and ignite the gas that heats the water for the second or two that it flows through the unit. Once you shut off the hot water tap, the flame stops as well. They're best for people who typically aren't drawing water for more than one use at a time. For example, running a shower and washing machine simultaneously. Tankless models are best for homes that use gas to heat the water and electric models may require you to purchase a, an electrical upgrade to your home just to increase the capacity of the electricity used. So I would consider that before purchasing. Heat pumps capture heat from the air and transfer it to the water. They use about 60% less energy than standard electric water heaters. And while they cost more than electric only models, installation is similar and payback time is short. And because the heat pump is on top, a hybrid water heater needs as much as seven feet clearance from floor to ceiling. You'll also need about a thousand cubic feet of uncooled space to capture enough heat from the air, as well as a nearby drain to discharge the condensate. Heat pumps are known to be sort of faulty in cold spaces. So it's recommended to place your heat pump in somewhere that stays from 40 to 90 degrees to make sure it works perfectly. A roof mounted cell absorbs the sun's heat and transfers it to an antifreeze like fluid in a closed loop system that runs to the water tank. The best deliver stellar savings in the summer, making them attractive for warm, sunny regions. But savings suffer on cold and cloudy days. Most models employ a backup system that kicks in when necessary. Even with federal and local rebates, it could take 10 to 30 years to recoup the initial cost of a solar powered system and installing it. But it could definitely pay off to get one of these systems if your home is determined to be in a perfect spot for the sun. Condensing water heaters are another option if you heat your water with gas, but you also need more than 55 gallons of capacity for the unit. So that's another option for you. These models have a tank like a conventional water heater, but capture exhaust gases that would normally go out of the flue, which wastes energy. These gases are blown through a coil in the base of the unit where incoming cold water can absorb most of the heat. Hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, if, if you want to subscribe to our channel, we're going to be coming out with more videos like this. And you can follow our Twitter, which you'll find in the description. If you have any questions about water heaters or if you felt I left anything off, then comment in the section and I'll get back to you.